Well, my name is Jason Barris. I'm with Infragistics. Uh, many of your companies use our products. We've been around for about 30 years. Um, we have a table in the back. If you guys want to come and talk to us later, we'll be here um, all night. What I was going to talk about today real quick, because we have about nine or 10 minutes, is about the reality of what's happening in the enterprise and how OpenFin actually helps with that. A lot of the companies we work with are have already created very robust um, frameworks of rich client applications that suck in web, they suck in Java, they suck in Flash, they suck in whatever, and they try to create their own containers. And those containers, they've created all these mechanisms to communicate with each other. And that's basically what many of you have probably done for the last 10 or 15 years, um, moving applications to try to be more modern, etc. Um, but the problem is it doesn't have to be, um, or it's, the problem is it's impossible to probably do that at scale because you have thousands of apps that you're dealing with. And I think that's really where OpenFin can come in and help because OpenFin gives you this, what Gartner calls a bimodal approach to take your modern stuff um, and integrate it in with your legacy stuff and it kind of works together. And what I'm gonna focus on is a subset of OpenFin, which is really just the uh, container aspect of it. So I thought this blog was great. Uh, Mitra posted she had a lot of insight uh, four years ago um, that you know BA doesn't build planes, uh, so why should you as financial services companies really work on app containers? And that's where OpenFin comes into play, and that's where Infragistics can also help out uh, as well. So our message is to really focus on what you do best, which is all the hard stuff behind the scenes, and then let companies like OpenFin, Infragistics, et cetera, help you on the front end um, and with those containers to build those robust applications where you're working on um, back-end stuff. So I look at uh, what our solution is and what OpenFin really does give you this opportunity for a bimodal approach uh, to deliver a robust solution that integrates real modern Angular stuff in with maybe some of your WPF, some of your .NET, some of your Windows Forms, Java, uh, it, it doesn't really matter. So I have a couple scenarios. Uh, I did some demos last year at FinJS. The one I'm gonna show today is scenario two, which is really demonstrating how you can have applications communicate with each other and some of the, the inner workings of, of just how to set that up. Uh, if you're interested, there's a really cool app we have on our website which shows how to use uh, Signal R with OpenFin to communicate with a mobile device. So you can actually have like a Xamarin app or even a native Android app or whatever, I guess it doesn't matter, JavaScript uh, um, app, and you're doing something here and you're communicating through that channel that OpenFin gives you um, across those boundaries and you can really create something pretty interesting. But in this scenario, I'm gonna have uh, basically applications just simply communicating with each other, sending messages back and forth, and one's gonna be WPF, one's gonna be JavaScript, and one's gonna uh, spawn a new OpenFin app, which can pretty much be anything. The technologies I'm gonna to use today, like I said, or I'm, I'm not gonna show any of the native mobile stuff, but on the left-hand side, um, you can come by our table later and see all the things that we have to offer. Uh, many of you guys know, many of you guys are probably using our Windows Forms grid, but we have an Angular grid that does a lot of the same thing, so you might want to move to that uh, as you're you know, modernizing and digitizing your, um, your enterprises. So with that, let me get into a demo. The first thing I'm going to show is this is your typical experience that you've had, but the problem with this experience is we've done this in the past and it's all based on Windows Forms, WPF, some rich client technology, so you're sort of trapped within the bounds of, of this application. Um, you can move windows around, it works really well, but it works for the purpose of this. So how do we add some modern um, into this experience? So the first thing I'm gonna show is an Angular chart, and the Angular chart has a couple interesting things. Um, the, the neat thing is, oh cool, it must be six o'clock. Uh, 6.45 or something. Um, but the cool thing is to set this up, you don't have to do a whole lot of work. This is basically you're passing it data and you get a whole bunch of default capabilities. Those default capabilities you can customize uh, you know, however you'd like, but I don't want to focus necessarily on our product. What I want to talk about more is sort of what happens with OpenFin. So there's a couple things that I'm going to show you um, and this will actually happen um, during my demo. What this code here is actually doing is from my Angular app, it's creating a new OpenFin desktop application. So we've created a secondary app that happens to be Angular. It could be WPF, it really doesn't matter, and I'll show you why. 
And I'm just telling it to start this in a brand new container. So when we talk about the web today and everything had to live in the browser, when you're working with OpenFin, because it's a container that can spawn other containers in any technology, it doesn't have to be JavaScript, you just tell it what to actually execute and then that bus is created. You have an ID to that application that you created and you can start passing messages back and forth. So when I open up this screen, I'll, I'll uh, talk about it a little bit more. And then down here, I just want to show a little bit of how easy it is to set up your pub sub. So in this case, there's a couple things that are kind of neat about this demo. Um, not neat because it's necessarily a practical application. I'm going to have two charts and they're going to be synchronized. I'm going to be moving the WPF chart and it's going to send the window rectangle through OpenFin's bus over to the JavaScript app and it's going to move that chart as well. And then the other thing is I have a third app, that WPF app, and that WPF app is basically going to just allow you to select something and it'll change stuff in the, w, the other WPF app in the other and in the JavaScript app. So all this is happening basically through OpenFin or if you were doing it yourself, you'd have to add all this pub sub stuff um, and it's a lot of code to write. And then finally, just in this specific app, um, the way I'm going to launch this is I have an Angular app. I have the web server already running. It's on 40, port 4200. And I'm going to tell OpenFin to actually launch this Angular app. So the way you do that is with the OpenFin CLI. Uh, an OpenFin has some magic in their CLI, but it's going to take this, wrap it, put it in container, and launch it. So I have that set up already right here. You can see it's pretty straightforward. I tell OpenFin to launch, and I'm passing it this app.json file. So I'll hit enter. And magically, this chart's going to show up in a second. There we go. So here we have one chart. And this chart, uh, you saw the configuration for the chart. There wasn't much to it. It's basically your typical financial chart. It has a bunch of indicators that you can add. And you know we do a lot of stuff for free for you that you know is kind of cool. Um, but you can go and learn about all this later. But the idea with this is it's just an Angular chart and you didn't have to write a lot of code to get here. So I'm gonna push this over to the side and I'm gonna jump over to Visual Studio. But in Visual Studio, I have here a, an app and it has the same chart. The way we build our charts is we do a lot of internal code translation. So the JavaScript chart or the C Sharp chart, we translate to TypeScript and a bunch of different modules and through the magic of Angular's compiler, all that tree shaking gives us a really tiny uh, JavaScript uh, chart at the end of the day, but it all starts out here in something C Sharp and WPF. And in this WPF app, we've got the same thing. So you'll notice here is I have, you know, my pub sub with the OpenFin app. The nice thing about OpenFin, I didn't mention the JavaScript, is it's static. So you just reference OpenFin, and if it's not created, it creates the object for you, and then you just reference it throughout your application. It has its own namespace. So it makes it super easy to just start building these applications. So now if I hit start on this guy, and you'll see this chart show up. So this is the same exact chart. It's just running in WPF. I have all my indicators. I can basically do what I want and add a, a trend line. I can zoom in and out, and I have some nice features here. But what's cool is I will shove this over to the left, like so, and I'll put this guy on the right, and you can see that through OpenFin, I'm having all of this synchronized. So basically, I'm passing messages back and forth through OpenFin, and it launches, or it actually just synchronizes the chart itself. Now, if you remember earlier, I said I'm going to spawn a new window. One of the other things that we do here is as I select one of these prices, it actually selects over here. It's really hard to see. Um, but over here, I just click that guy. And now this is that body of code that's actually going to pop up a data grid, and that it's going to pop up eventually here. Did I click it? Come on. There we go. It's probably now six are going to pop up. I'm recording my screen too, so that kind of slows things down. But anyway, now we got this super fast grid, and that's just showing some other data. There's no real point to that besides the fact that it's showing different data. And then the last thing is I've got this guy here, which is, a w again, another application. This is a WPF application. 
and it's very basic. And I basically just hard coded some values in here and I'm clicking it, it's passing that data over to, uh, to, the, to anyone that's listening. So anyone that's listening to this can go grab that data and then they can do whatever they want with it. In this case, I'm just updating the chart with some random data. So I just wanted to show you that there was another chart that actually, or another grid um, that, that made its way up. But anyway, um, for more demos, come to the back. We've got one minute. Okay, one minute left. So I will finish with um, Infragistics uh, real quickly. We do more than just a UI. Uh, we have a, a whole services piece of the company. We do UI, UX. Uh, we do a lot of services for desktop to web migrations, digitization, uh, modernization, etc. And plus we have offices everywhere, New Jersey, New York, London, Tokyo, India, Bulgaria, Montevideo, South America. So wherever you guys really are, um, we are as well. So we're here to help. Uh, so I appreciate all your time today. Thank you, uh, Mitra and the uh, OpenFin team for having us. So thank you.